Now, even though there are five roles, two of them are for the entire forest. The other three are in every single domain. So let me explain what I mean by that. Let's say, for example, let me just draw on the whiteboard here while I'm talking to you. Let's say, for example, that I don't have my mouth, uh, my pen. Uh, I forgot to turn my pen on. I thought I did. Okay, now it's on, so now we can draw. Okay, so let's say, for example, that we have three domains. Okay, it's not the best drawing in the world, but you get the idea. Okay, so we have three domains. We have our parent domain, we have two child domains. Now, as I said, there are five roles that are part of Active Directory. Two of them are forest-based, which means for the entire forest, there's only going to be two servers that are holding these roles. So, for example, you might have the two forest-based roles here, and then there are three domain-based roles, which mean every single one of these domains are going to have those three roles. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about uh, forest-based roles versus domain-based roles. There's five roles total, two for the entire forest, three in every single domain. All right? So let's go ahead and let's break down each one of these. All right, let me take myself off camera here so that I can bend over and draw properly and you won't be staring at my bald head. So, okay. Let's talk about the force base roles first. So there are two force base roles. Okay. So the first role is the schema master. Okay. There's only one schema master per force. Okay, the first role is the schema master, and there's only one schema master per forest. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about that for a second so that you understand what, what I mean by this. Okay, what is the schema master? The schema master is the, it's the box that holds the database. Your schema is your database. All right, Active Directory is just a database. The schema are all of the fields and all of the attributes within that database. Now, understanding that Active Directory is just a database, if you know what you're doing, you can change that database. You can literally go into the Active Directory database and change the fields. Let me give you a reason why, all right? When I first got out of the military, all right, you're talking almost 30 years ago. When I first got out of the military, I went to work for American Standard, the toilet makers, and I made 50 toilets a day. I made 25 in the morning, 25 in the afternoon. Now, when I was done making each set of toilets, I would take the toilets and I'd put them on this conveyor belt unit, and before I would send them to the kiln, because toilets are made out of clay, before you send them in and they get fired in the kiln and turn into ceramic, I would stamp the bottom of the toilet with my number. It was 343. All right, so the bottom of the toilet we get stamped with 343. Now, the reason they did that is if you take it into the kiln, it breaks, something happens, they can look at the toilet, see whose number it is, and then go figure out why it broke, okay? Was it bad clay? Was it something I did? They, they just want to find out why they're breaking. My time card didn't even have my name. My time card just said 343. Now, let's fast forward that to today. Let's say that I'm in American Standard today and I'm in the same environment, all right? You might want to go into the Active Directory database, all right? And you might want to set up an employee ID field. So this way, if you needed to search on 343, all right, who's employee 343, you could search the database, find who 343 is, and then go and talk to them. If I know how to change the Active Directory database, I can add that employee ID field. All right. So that's why it's good to understand that the database is just called the schema. That's your database. And that all of the different fields are just attributes. It's the schema master's job. It's the schema master's job to know that database and to know those attributes. So that's what it does. 
Okay. Uh, let me just look at the messages. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. How far back does this apply? Yes, thank you. We all need toilets. <laughs> Uh, I am literally LOLing right now. Okay, it's funny. So, yes, I used to tell people I made after dinner seats. That's what I used to tell everybody. I made after dinner seats. Okay, so, all right. So, that's what the Schema Master's job is. All right, now, the Schema Master's job is running today. You only have one, but it's out there today. Okay, it's on your network someplace. All right, the second forest base role is the domain naming master. This job literally is one of the easiest jobs. It just makes sure that no two domains, okay? It just makes sure that no two domains are the same. Okay? Now, Brian, uh, oh, I'm sorry, how far back? I'm sorry, I, that was an actual question. How far back does this apply? Brian was asking. Yeah, this started in 2000. Uh, in, in NT351 and NT40, these roles did not exist. All right. Matter of fact, in NT2000, in, I'm sorry, NT2000, Windows Server 2000, I don't, re I don't even know if I remember these roles in 2000. I remember the first time where I started... Like, really knowing the roles was 2003, but Brian says he believes it started with 2000. I, I think it did too, but I don't think in 2000 we ever really worked with it. I mean, there was definitely a PDC emulator. That's one of the domain-based roles, the PDC emulator, because you had to emulate an old PDC. So that's what we're going to talk about next. So let's talk about the three domain-based roles. Now, every single domain has one of these roles, okay? The first one is the PDC emulator, okay? The PDC emulator. Let me get rid of some of the older comments here. So, this way, I'm staying on top of everybody, okay? So, the PDC emulator. Okay, so let's talk about this. When this first came out, its job was to emulate a PDC. Because remember, in NT351 and NT40, you had PDCs and BDCs. The thing you have to understand is that Windows 95, Windows 98, NT, these systems literally had it built right into the operating system that when they were on a network, okay, on a domain, to find the PDC. Windows 98 and NT had it built right into the operating system that if you're on a domain, the only way you're going to log on is by finding the PDC. So when Windows Server 2000 came out, there was no more PDC-BDC relationship. All of the domain controllers were equal. The problem was, is that you still needed to emulate a PDC so that these older machines could still get onto the network. Now, listen, in today's day and age, Microsoft knows none of you are using 95, 98, or NT40. NT40 had its own workstation, not only server, it had workstation. Okay, Microsoft knows those boxes aren't being used. But the PDC emulator is still one of the most important roles on your network, on your domain. And here's the reason why. Since Microsoft knows the PDC emulator isn't really used anymore as a PDC emulator, they started giving it other tasks on your network. This started, I know for a fact it started in 2003, and then they took it a little further in 2008 and so forth. Today, the PDC emulator is responsible for making sure that passwords are replicated properly. Do you know it's so important that if the PDC emulator goes down, if it's on a server and that server goes down, your users are going to have a hard time logging into the domain. It's that important. And the Microsoft has a question about that on the exam. Hey, uh, you know, you're, you're realizing that users after this time of the day aren't able to log into the domain anymore. What do you need to do? And one of the answer is move the PDC emulator to another server. 
because the PDC emulator is that important, okay? So even though it used to replicate a PDC, it doesn't really do that anymore because there are no more older machines trying to find a PDC. So Microsoft started using it for other tasks. The number one thing, password replication, okay? So just be aware of that. So that's what the PDC emulator does. Okay, the next one is the RID master. Okay, what's the RID master's job? The RID master's job is to make sure that every single SID number is unique. It helps create these numbers and it makes sure that no two SID numbers are repeated. What's a SID number? A SID number, okay, a SID number is actually the security identification number that is attached to every single account. Okay, the SID number is attached to every single account that you put. All right, every, every single time. So let's, let's jump over here. Let's jump over here. Let's say that I go into Active Directory right now. And while I'm in Active Directory, I decide that I'm going to create a brand new user. Yesterday, we created Kendall's user out in Nashville. When I created Kendall's user, that user account got a unique security identification number. That number is never repeated. Okay, that is, that is Kendall's number. Matter of fact, if you delete, if you delete Kendall's account and even recreate Kendall's account using the same information, it's not the same account. Because as soon as you recreate Kendall's account, that account gets a new SID number. And here's the thing you got to understand. All of your permissions, all of your rights, all of your groups, all that stuff is attached to your SID number, not your username. Let me say that again. All of your information, the groups you belong to, your token, all that stuff is attached to the SID number and not the username. It has to be that way. It has to be that way. Because if it was attached to the name, you would never be able to rename an account. Once you rename the account, it would mess it up. So everything is attached to the security identification number. This is the reason why when someone leaves your company, you don't automatically delete their account. Because if you find out later that they did encryption or they did something that messed up your network, it is easier to literally change their password, log in as them, and fix what you need to fix. But if you've deleted their account, even if you recreate the account, it's not the same account because now it's a new SID number. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you, I, what I normally do, and I'll, we can talk about this. I'll show you a little thing that I do. But what I normally do is I put the deleted accounts into a separate OU. I take everything away from the account, I lock the account out, and I put it in a separate OU that's locked down, but I do not delete the account, normally for at least a year, okay? So, all right, so that's what the RID Master's job is. It creates the SID numbers, make sure the SID numbers are unique. Finally, you have the Infrastructure Master. It's the infrastructure master's job to make sure that it knows all of the resources within your domain. It's the infrastructure master's job to know all of the resources inside of the domain. Okay? So the infrastructure master knows what printers are published to Active Directory, what folders are published to Active Directory. It knows the infrastructure of your, of your Active Directory domain. Now, here's the thing. This is a lot like one other component, the global catalog. Remember, the global catalog, one thing you got to remember about the global catalog, the global catalog has every single Active Directory object inside the global catalog. It doesn't have all of the fields. Like, for example, Will Panic is in the global catalog, and it might have my username, my first name, my last name, my email, the groups I belong to, but that's it. 
It doesn't have my phone numbers. It doesn't have my addresses. It doesn't have all the other stuff that's in Active Directory. The global catalog holds every single attribute inside of Active Directory, but not, I'm sorry, it holds every single object, but not all the attributes. So the global catalog knows everything about the domain. So this works a lot like the infrastructure master, because that's what the infrastructure master's job is. So with that being said, this is the reason why the infrastructure master and the global catalog can't be on the same box. If they are, the infrastructure master automatically gets shut down. Let me say that again. If the infrastructure master and the global catalog are on the same machine, the infrastructure master automatically gets shut down. Now, people always ask me, well, what kind of problems does that cause? Nothing. We're doing it right here in this studio. Every single role is on Batman, the name of our server. Batman's my global catalog. I don't have any issues. Because the global catalog has even more than the infrastructure master offers. So, it, do you need to even worry about having an infrastructure master? Yes. I would because the infrastructure master at times can be a little faster at certain things because it's not as big of a uh, it's not as big of a uh, like a database that it holds. So the infrastructure master can be a little faster at times. So yes, you should still put an infrastructure master somewhere in your domain, but it has to be on a domain controller that's not a global catalog. Okay, so it has to be on a domain controller that's not a global catalog. So. With that being said, if you get a test question that says you are doing packet sniffing and during the packet sniffing, you notice that you're not getting any infrastructure master traffic, what do you need to do? The answer is move the infrastructure to a machine that's not uh, with the global catalog. Because the reason you're not seeing any of that infrastructure master traffic is because the role has been shut down. It's sitting on the same box as a global catalog. And if it is, it doesn't work. It just stops working. Okay? Now, these are the five roles. If you want to transfer these roles while the machine's up and running, it's a very easy process. You go into Active Directory, you go to Operational Master Roles, you hit which role you want to change, and you change it. It's, it's very, very simple. 